talk to you today about the idea of purity. The reason? I'm drinking brandy instead of coffee this time. I think once I was drinking tea as well. I do enjoy tea a lot as well. But the alcohol is symbolic of purity for two reasons. One, because alcohol is actually a purifying agent. But two, because alcohol is generally seen as impure by uh, many religious proponents and whatnot. And the, the idea that I want to talk to you about, though, is not about moral purity. That's a load of shit. We've talked about this before. Uh, morality doesn't exist. Rights don't exist. All of that stuff is purely subjective based on your perspective on nature and society and your own upbringing and all of that. There is, is so much that is not universal there. You can't say that any of that is is um, natural or, or standard or universal. It's just not. What I wanted to talk to you about regarding purity though is this idea of pure bread, pure style, pure um, you know, systematic, you know, things. I want to relate to you a couple of ideas. In animal breeding, you know, there's, there's purebreds. And pure breeding, unfortunately, often requires some interbreeding, or inbreeding, rather. And it tends to lead to problems health problems that become these genetically passed down chronic problems for the animals because you're not giving them the genetic diversity to kind of pick and choose and mutate and evolve the way they normally would. And much goes the same way for the old royal lineages that we find uh, throughout history, throughout feudal systems, because we find so many inbred royal family trees that had psychological problems, that had physical problems. Um, th there's even a, uh, a theory out there that, uh, the, that TV series, uh, Little People, Big Hearts or something like that from a few years ago, they mentioned that, um, that when you have little people in, uh, you know, in a population, there's a, a very good chance that you can track them back to a point of, of inbreeding. You know, is, is it a, a causal relation or a correlation? I don't know. I, I haven't really looked at the reports. It's just something that I've heard on a TV show. But <clears throat> it brings up an interesting point. How pure is pure and, and what is the value of purity? Uh, obviously, in, in some cases, we value purity because of the idea of something not being tainted. Uh, gold is particularly valuable the, the less tainted it is because the longer lasting it is, the, the greater a sheen, it doesn't rust, it, it doesn't tend to oxidize. Um, rust is oxidizing. oxidation, but uh, that's, not, you know, that's not the point. Um, you know, drug dealers like their pure cocaine because it gets better effect and everything and when you dilute it with other shit you end up creating I guess customers that aren't so happy don't get as good of a high or whatever sorry I'm not a drug user it's just something you hear you know on TV and the movies all the time about how pure their coke is we talk about uh, diamonds in the same way how free from flaws they are and these are these are fine things these in this case, purity is referring more to something that's not organic, something that is, um, you know, mechanically manufactured or, or at least relatively inertly manufactured. Diamonds, cocaine, gold, these are all things that are, are extracted, refined. I mean, they're not, they're not being bred this way. It's not like you know, the, 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 the coca plant is any more or, or less pure through, through breeding regimens or whatnot. That's not what we're talking about. Um, you know, mining gold and diamonds is the same thing, 
these are just kind of purely mechanical processes that we refine certain aspects out of and get them into something. So in that sense, purity is okay because we're taking a large mass of something and refining it down to a simple element. But in more organic things like art, like martial arts, like breeding, um, we tend to find that purity, as people speak of it, tends to lead to stagnation. It tends to lead to a lack of evolution. It tends to lead to eventual problems. Uh, let's take a look at martial arts since that's my specialty. When you have a pure system, something that was passed down from generation to generation to generation, well, you realize that when that martial art was created, it was created under specific circumstances by a specific person and his students or his friends, his peers, whatever. And it was in no way possible to be complete and whole. It worked for them in their time, under their circumstances, under the, the social norms of, of their combat. And so when you teach a pure form of martial arts, what you're really teaching people is a limited form of martial arts because they're not able to go beyond that. Um, the whole idea for this, this discussion right here was actually sparked thinking about the French. You realize the French do not allow non-French words in their language. They don't assimilate non-French words unless they can find a specifically Frenchism, Frankism, however you would say it, unless they find something that is specific to their culture or created by their own academics to be French, following the rules of their grammar and, and phonetic structures and all that, it doesn't get into their language. They find ways to circumvent using foreign languages because they want to keep their French pure. It's also incredibly limiting. One of the beauties of English, and by no means is English a perfect language, it's a goddamn confusing and convoluted language, um, but, but one of the beauties of English is the fact that it is so able to assimilate new things and things from varying cultures. We have an answer for every grammatical situation. We have an answer for every tense. And I mean, you realize that Latin has three times as many tenses as we do, right? Um, and that's fine. We've got answers for that. We use other grammatical structures to, to get around that and, that, and that's fine. But it was by not staying pure, it was by allowing ourselves to evolve, by allowing ourselves to blend and adapt and mutate over the years. Uh, that we have created such a versatile language. Um, you just don't see that happen. I mean, you know, they say William Shakespeare added like a thousand words to the English language. This was hundreds, hundreds of years ago. And, you know, I don't know exactly how many but words there are in the English language, but I mean, there's, you know, hundreds of thousands. And, most people are familiar with about 20% of the language, if I remember my statistics correctly. 20%. That's, that's pretty shabby. <laughs> but then you have this one guy that at that time, when there was barely even a standardization to the language, say, hey, I'm going to throw a few more words at you. Here's a thousand of them. It's pretty impressive. I'm not even a big fan of Shakespeare, but that's a pretty impressive feat right there. And so it brings up this question, what, what good is purity if pure breeding yields non-beneficial, you know, uh, in fact sometimes damaging flaws in creatures, if purity breeds a limited and too rigid a structure in uh, in martial arts or, or art in general, um, in any kind of, of system of, of thought and expression, um, you're limiting the expression to certain circumstances and certain techniques. And that's horrible. It becomes very rigid and non-adaptable. And we find over and over again 
in the world of, of evolution, in the world of just well, in the universe, things that can't adapt tend to die off pretty quickly. Um, you know, and there are cases where things don't need to adapt that that r radically. I mean, you know, turtles and alligators, crocodiles, sharks, a lot of those things haven't needed to evolve much beyond what they were a few million years ago because they kind of have stayed at their spot in the food chain and haven't needed to adapt. They've kind of found a relative state of equilibrium in in their place in the circle of life, forgive the Lion King parlance. Um, and that's fine. Sometimes, you know, if something works, you don't mess with it, and that's, and that's fine. But even those species, they have evolved a little bit. They have. It hasn't been much, but they've evolved a little bit. Other things have to evolve a lot, depending on circumstances. You realize martial arts can't evolve without assimilating new technology for weapons and strategy and, and things like that. We don't fight the same as we did, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 2 million years ago. You know, some of the social violence is still the same, but the, the technology, the uh, psychology and all that has adapted quite a bit away from where it used to be. And so we have to adapt or we end up finding ourselves with just an expensive and fancy dance that we've learned. So, I just want you to start thinking in, in terms of, of how necessary is purity to what I'm doing. Am I doing something that is purely mechanical and, uh, and inert, that, that purity is actually a desired trait? Distilling alcohol, purity is kind of necessary. but. On the other side, is this something organic that needs to adapt and change as things go on? Your philosophy is one of those things. If your philosophy is very uh, rigid, like religion, you are going to have a hard time adapting to new information. You realize that there is far more information in the, in the universe, in the world, in your city, than you will ever be able to know in a lifetime. There is always going to be room for more information coming in than you thought you knew. And all of a sudden, sometime, your philosophy is not going to be able to answer the question that's being asked because you don't have access to the information. And because of the rigidity of your system, you are not allowing the new information to come in. That's a bad thing. I'm going to flat out say it. I'm going to put a moral qualification on it. That is a bad thing. So learn to be flexible when you need to be. There are times to be rigid. But there are also times where you need to be flexible. It's that great play of hard and soft that we see in martial arts over and over and over again. Structure and suppleness over and over and over again. It's a sine wave. Uh, that's all I got for you. I'm not going to ramble on too much further. Just think about how pure you need things to be and start stretching a little bit. Talk to you later. Good journey.